Well, good morning, everyone. May I say how wonderful it is that we have spiritualists from all parts of Great Britain who have traveled through the night and uh, uh, some found accommodation, others um, uh, came uh, very early this morning that we may meet here in this very magnificent hall at Wembley uh, to celebrate 100 years. Of spiritualism as was seen by those great pioneers of the past. I'm very proud that I can say in this centenary year that I was the president to follow the first president uh, that made such an impact on this country of spiritualism, Mrs. Emma Harding's Britain. And to think that a hundred years ago uh, she had this dream the churches, instead of being isolated, uh, could come together in a great union. And it was she that gave to us those seven magnificent uh, principles of which the Spiritualist National Union accept and of which covers all the fields that are necessary in this life. And to know that people of all religions accept those particular principles. And I think that was what Emma Harding's Britain envisaged, a movement that could be accepted by all religions as a unifying movement to bring them all together into one great whole. I think that she understood what we teach our children, and that is that all are parts of one stupendous whole whose body nature is, but God the soul. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this is a day we must all remember. And perhaps in 200 years, when they celebrate again their second centenary, we that are here this day will be here again from the spirit world to say we were there at the first. And I am reminded, ladies and gentlemen, by two great people who stood at the Royal Albert Hall uh, in um, 1934 um, when there was a remembrance service where the speaker was Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and the demonstration of mediumship it was by one of the greatest mediums Spiritualism is now, uh, Mrs. Estelle Roberts. And um, he gave his last. He was a very sick man. He got out of bed to come to take that service. And it was his last service for spiritualism. And the great medium, Estelle Roberts, gave her remarkable demonstration to a hall that was packed to capacity. And after she had finished her demonstration and the service was over, he went up to her and said these words. Go forward. Prove the continuity of life in all parts of the world. And don't give an inch. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have come here to prove that from those very few churches in Manchester uh, that was the beginning of our union, we are saying a hundred years later we have gone forward. We are proving the continuity of life after death. We have tried to uphold the seven principles of modern spiritualism and we are not giving an inch. I think, ladies and gentlemen, that if we can just this day be together as we are, all friendly, meeting each other, speaking to each other, seeing among you many of our old workers who perhaps now have retired a little, although I don't think we do retire, 
The funniest thing is that as we get older, we get better. No, I'm very good, really. <laughs> and, um, I mean, I thought I was modest when I was a boy of 12. But I really am good now, and I'm, well, you know how old I am. And I say to these young ones, you know, that coming along who are so good, if you can be as good as me, you'll do well, you see here. Uh, that's the spirit. We never give up. And I'm going to say this without any fear whatsoever. The union will still be here in another hundred years. And spiritualism will be in every country of this world because they need it. Spiritualism is needed to unite the world together into one great brotherhood. And we have the greatest power behind us, the power of the spirit. And they will be with us. I think this is a wonderful occasion. It's lovely to see you. I've tried to shake hands and speak to as many as I can. And if I haven't been able to do, I apologize. I just haven't seen you. But let us also remember that in this hall, there will be tens of thousands of spirit people. And may I say to the Wembley people that, you know, have this hall, this hall will never, ever be the same again. <laughs> because we will have put something in it that was never there before. And these tens of thousands of spirit people that are here way back in those early beginnings right up to now. The message has gone out to them, meet at Wembley. And like you, they haven't come by bus like you. But they're here. There's not one little space that there's not a soul who is visiting us today. So we have come, ladies and gentlemen, to be with our pioneers and bless them for the work they have done and for all those presidents that started their churches they too will be here to rejoice with us that for a hundred years we fought our battle we got our recognition through parliament and today we can freely stand and say we've done a good job of work and they with them we shall continue. Go away from here, taking the memory of today, but doubling our efforts to see the world knows we're here to stay. And we shall never give an inch. We shall never give up. So Sir Arthur, you are our president in spirit. I hope you're here. And I hope too that you will know we've kept our word. It is my great pleasure to declare our day of celebrations open. Have a great day that will live in our hearts. Do you live in Westfield? No. Just picked up something to do with Westfield. That's where I thought I was. Um, there's no one there that's got a contact with Westfield, is there? <laughs> Sorry? Oh. Um, could they be relation through your father? Yes. Because it's your father that is here. Do you understand that? Yes. And. Um, they're talking to me about Westfield. Yes. And I felt that it should have a link with you. 
Do you remember a family named Cook? Yes. Hmm. Because there is someone here that wishes to be remembered to you with the name of Cook. Could your second initial C belong to your father? Could it be your father's initial? No, a mother's. A oh, mother's. Your mother's? Yes. Oh, well, I felt it was to do with the parents. I can get away with it like that, can't I? <laughs> uh, but... That's what I got, you see, here. Yeah. And I, someone was trying to get a contact with me, and as they were doing so, they told me to go to the second initial. Do you understand that? Yes. And um, they had met Mr. Legg on the other side. Okay. Do you remember Mr. Legg? The name, the name is familiar. Yes. You knew a Mrs. Legg, didn't you? Yes. Yes. And our husband had passed over, hadn't he? Yes. Yeah, well, that's him. <laughs> because that's the one I had. And uh, as I'm talking about this man, I, I feel this may be going back over 30 years with you. Yes. Could that be correct? Yes. Because I feel that I have to uh, go back. There is a contact to do with your father and uh, your mother, but I don't feel the contact is where you're living now. You must have moved away from your family. Yes, indeed, yes. Because I don't feel there are a lot of you. Well, I mean, I don't mean a lot of you, the body. <laughs> a lot of the family. No. And I think that you moved away because you felt you had to move away. Is that correct? Wasn't this to do with your early beginnings of life? Uh, no, I moved away because of business. Well, all right, let me have that, you know. I'm not far off. <laughs> Nevertheless, <laughs> that's what's coming through here. And I feel that they wish me to... Uh, oh, they've told me, sir, um, that I have to go to where you are, or where you once lived, but it seems quite a long time ago. Um, and, ah, oh, that's it. They've just told me, sir, you are the Westfield. I originally came from Westfield Close. Oh, well, there we are. Yeah. And, sir, you left there, um, because you needed something different. And you are a person uh, that has to be doing things. Is this right? Yes. Yes. Does your wife get a bit fed up on it, you think? Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, because I hear a voice say, you're never there to do various things, but you can always find you doing something that you've no need to do, but you do. Is that what you <laughs> Anyway, do you understand it in that way? Yes, I do, yes. Well, good. Uh, because I happen to have a lady here that must be your mother-in-law. Yes. That's passed over, I mean. Yes. Pardon? Yes. Well, she's here, and uh, would she be a person, sir, uh, that looked at things very seriously? Do you know what I mean by that? Yes. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, because she's looking at you and she says, well, he's done better than I thought he was going to be. <laughs> so I think she's taken to you a lot now, but I think she was careful before. Could you Possib accept it in that way? Possibly, yeah. yes. Well, I have to tell you that. That's the way it's coming through. <laughs> and uh, for some reason there, she's brought you... Uh, why have you brought him flowers? She's brought you flowers? She's brought you flowers. I mean, I would have thought fruit, but nevertheless, mm -hmm. she's brought flowers. And she's brought them here because she said, you love to have everything neat and colourful. Is that correct? That's true, yes. yes. And you love flowers yourself. Now, come on, be honest. I do, yes. That's yes. right. And you love to see them in the garden, but you love to have them around the place as well. I do. And you yes. like a little pot here and a little pot there <laughs> just to brighten things up. Now, is that correct? That's yes. true, yes. That's right. Mm. Well, now that's why they've come to see you. And uh, this, oh, 
You knew a man by the name of Prophet. Sorry, I didn't catch the name. Prophet. Prosser. No, Prophet. Proctor? No. No. Prophet. Prophet. No, I can't recall the name. Yes, you can. <laughs> just think about it because I get that name there very clearly and um, I am told sir uh, here that you once lived in a house where you went off a main road into a, 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 a place that you couldn't go through you had to come back again that's Westfield close yes oh, there. but it was off a main road it was yes, yes? And um, you did that, and um, you went the left side for your place rather than the right. Correct. Yes, because if you went the left side, sir, there were a few more houses on that side than there were on the other side. Yes. And altogether, there probably were about ten houses. Yes, about right, yes, sir. That's what I see. <laughs> and that's 30 years ago, isn't it? It is, yes. Yes, right, you see it now. So you see it hasn't gone. So therefore, sir, oh, and I have something else, some very good news to tell you. And that is, um, you're through the woods now. You're, you're through the woods, out of the woods. Oh, you're out of the wood now. And uh, I have to tell you uh, that you know you'll never retire, don't you? <laughs> I've already retired, yes. Yeah, well, <laughs> and you're, you're doing as much work, aren't you, now, in various ways you did before. Very much so, yes. That's it. You'll never retire. <laughs> There'll always be a lot to do. And they wanted me to pass that on. I've just asked them if they can give me a house that's, and describe it to me or let me see it. And all I can see is a house with a garden at the front and I can see lovely um, blossom on a tree at the front of the house. Yes, cherry, cherry trees there in the front are. garden. I can see it and I can see a number on a gate and it's number six correct there we are well i want to come here and um i've got to get this man away from me because he keeps measuring me for a coffin I didn't know they did it with a tape measure, but nevertheless, uh, he's here, and uh, he keeps giving to me a name of Scarlet. And he's up there somewhere. Where do, that's where he is. And someone knows something to do with a man who must have been an undertaker when he was here, and seems to give me the name of Scarlet. Am I right? That's where he is. Oh dear. Nobody knows you. I'm getting something to do with Durham Road. It's something to do with someone that knows two people. And I felt that I had something to do with George and something to do with Herbert. And the gentle gentleman seems to be where the gentleman is that put his hand up a little while ago. Do you know that, sir? Yes, I. I knew George Scarlett, who was an undertaker in Norwich, and I too knew two other undertakers in other parts of the country. Oh, there you are. I've got this this contact, you see here, and I also heard a voice say to me. Tell him that I knew Mr. Fitt. Yes. Th is that correct? Yes. You knew Mr. Fitt. Well, I've got this contact here, and every time I walk, he walks with me, measuring me up, so I know. <laughs> and I'm worried, you see, because I said to God, keep me alive until the celebrations of the centenary are over. <laughs> and uh, as we're coming to the end of this one, I'm wondering if he's reminding me 
I'm coming to the end of things, you see here. <laughs> but will you accept, sir, that he wants to make this contact, you see here? Yes. He is talking about this Durham Road, and he also says to me here that he knew a man that you knew by the name of Spear. Yes, I knew Spear. Mr. William Spear. Spears. Is that correct? Yes. They called him Bill. I don't know that. Well, now you know, uh, because that's what I got. So that has come through, and I'm told to go to a road that could be called Thank Road or Unthank Road. It's I don't know which it is. Unthank. Pardon? Unthank. Unthank. Then you know Mr. Spear because he had a contact with a road similar to that. Would you know that? I can't place that. All right, well, will you, you know. I will. Don't forget, when you find it, do apologise to me about it. I will. Because I like to know, you see. <laughs> and it is important that um, it goes, um, don't take this wrong, what I'm going to say to you. But when you were at home, did you have marks on a wall yes. when you grew. Yes. Do you know, the gentleman here, and he keeps on saying, I used to put the mark on the wall to see if he'd growed any. If he could reach. <laughs> yes, he did. That's correct, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yes, he's here and wishes to be remembered there. And I to tell you that they brought a dog here. Yes. And it was a dog that was in this house yes. at that particular time. That's great. And they're talking about a gentleman by the name of Jack. I and knew... he was a friend of your father's. Yes, he was. That's right. And you remember the Morrises as well, don't you? Yes, I do. That's right, because they're here. And there's a gentleman also that worked on the railway. And I want to go to um, something to do with the railway that was not very far from you. That's correct. Is that correct? Yes. And they're sending, they want me to ask you of some concern to do with David. Who is David, sir? I Someone can't, living here. I can't think. Uh, I know several Davids, but I can't think of a concern. I see. Will you keep that in your mind? I, 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 I don't want to, you know, sort of force it onto you. No. But I know you're going to know what I'm giving to you. Thank you. All right? And uh, just be a good lad. I'm told, <laughs> sir, I mean, we all have to go to the bank. Well, I don't know how you are, but I don't like the manager smiling at me too much. <laughs> uh, I go in and try to miss him if I can. Because when he smiles, I think, what's he want? You know, here. <laughs> but you've been going through a very funny period. And it's a period of where you've had to weigh various things with each other. Yes. And you had some news a while ago that didn't go down awfully well because you were a little upset of why you'd be able to get through this year if this situation carried on. I've got good news for you. The whole situation is turning the corner. And I'm quite sure you'll come to the end of this year much better than what you're thinking at the present time. That's good. Do you understand that? <laughs> yes. That's what I've come to tell you, and it is to make you feel happy about things, and uh, not to let yourself get too disappointed. Do you live in Westfield? No. 